Okay, so we're back again, and this is exciting. I just want to follow up on the last slide and say, with third-party libraries, their, their popularity continues to grow and grow and grow. And so we want to make sure as security testers that our organizations are keeping them current. Uh, that is an important aspect of security. Now, Active Server Pages, or ASPs, this is another technologic technology that the developers use to display HTML documents to users on the fly, right? So that is when a user requests a web page, right then with ASP1 is created at that time. That's exciting. So to create dynamic, interactive web pages, uh, it, it uses a scripting language, right? Such as uh, JavaScript or uh, uh, um, uh, JScript, a, a Microsoft version of JavaScript or VBScript, right? And um, this uh, sometimes this has been replaced um, by ASP.NET, right? However, for the purpose of this chapter, ASP, ASP.NET, etc., that's all kind of used interchangeably. Now, not all web servers support ASP, uh, and uh, uh, 2S 5.0 and later support ASP.NET, just to let you know, server-wise. So it's important to understand that the web server is not the web browser, right? As you know, right? I know that's simplistic, but I just want to make this a distinction that the web server, not the web browser, must support ASP. That's just the distinction that I'm trying to make, right? Um, so as uh, an example here, some ASP uh, script. And uh, as I know, uh, Microsoft does not want users to be able to view an ASP web pages source code. Back to that conversation on source code from compiled code versus runtime code, okay? Now, the Apache web server, which we already mentioned in the Equifax example, um, so to keep, attack, normally a very good product, right? It was about the other attack vectors that created a vulnerability. So to keep attackers from knowing the directory structure, right, and the, the attack that you can use then as, an, as a hacker is a directory transversal, things like that. So to keep attackers from knowing the directory structure, uh, you create uh, a, um, a, an IIS or 2S web server creating a virtual directory. Right, that's recommended so that the path a user sees on the web browser isn't the actual path on the web server. So a virtual directory is a pointer to the physical directory. Right. So after the uh, server uh, OS is installed and the physical directories are created, a web administrator will create these virtual directories. That's going to prevent sites from uh, site visitors from seeing the physical directory structure, which will give them insight and an attacker, a hacker on uh, commands used in the OS and responses, right? How they engage each other. So the uh, web server uses this ASP scripting language to generate HTML pages for the web browser. And so to prevent potential security problems, Microsoft, uh, understandably, does not want users to be able to view uh, an ASP website source code, as I mentioned in the last uh, slide. The Apache web server is said to run on more than twice as many web servers as the uh, 2S. So Apache advantages uh, have many, right? And it works in just about any of the NICs, remember the Linux, Unix, etc., any of the NICs platforms, as well as Windows. And it's free. How do you not love free, right? So without a doubt, you'll run across Apache server uh, systems when conducting a security test, right? This is going to happen. So Apache is a sophisticated modular web server that you'll see. Now, using uh, scripting languages, so web pages can be developed with several scripting languages that I mentioned, such as VBScript and uh, JScript or JavaScript, right? And you can, uh, you should be able to recognize when one is being used because many security 
testing tools are written with uh, scripting languages. Also, most macro viruses and worms and all I, I, a lot of worms that take advantage of the cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Uh, we'll discuss that here later in this chapter, right? Based on this scripting language. So it's good to have an understanding of the vulnerabilities that cross -site, that, uh, like cross-site scripting that viruses and worms can take advantage of, but is needed to make these web pages dynamic right, using VBScript or JavaScript. So uh, similar to ASP, there's PHP, a uh, hypertext uh, processor that enables also these dynamic web pages. It's an open source, uh, it uses open source server side scripting languages, right? So it enables the creation of these dynamic web, web pages just like ASP does. Um, and again, because it's open source, it's great, right? Everybody loves free and that gets worked on. Originally mainly used in Unix type systems. Now, um, you, can, you can create your web server as a .php file, right? And investigate specific vulnerabilities if you chose to. As is often the case, the solution is often to upgrade to the latest version of PHP. It's kind of like when a server doesn't respond well, one of the one of the options is to reboot it, right? Especially if you have fail over capability where operations continued, right? Well, uh, often one of the first suggestions you should make as a security tester is have we upgraded to the latest version? Now, you should be familiar also with LAMP, which stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, so the abbreviation is LAMP, L-A-M-P. It's a collection of open source items put together. So LAMP is known as a solutions stack because it stacks several programs into one integrated web application solution. Uh, and then, just like others, we want to validate input to PHP. So, as PHP is not directly tied to the presentation layer, uh, input validation support in PHP, as in Java, is uh, specific to the framework being used, right? So, because there's no presentation framework in PHP, um, uh, with its overwhelming popularity, a large number of PHP applications implement input validation directly into their own code. Uh, input validation, another significant security mitigation tool, really part of DevSecOps, right? Development security operations. So, um, so you can use a number of functions in PHP as building blocks for building input validation, right? And um, yeah, examples are many. Um, cold fusion. So we talked about input validation as an example of secure coding. So uh, to review input validation, also known as data validation sometimes, is the proper testing of any input supplied to a user or an application, say in a form. That's how we started out the conversation today. And because it's difficult to de detect a malicious user who's trying to attack software, applications should check and validate all input entered into a system. It's one reason you can't enter a password with certain characters, right? You could try it, but you're going to get an error message. Your computer application is doing input validation. So, um, so the user input validation takes place on the server side, right? The server side and client side. So the input validation takes place on the server side during the um, postback session in this server side validation, right? And languages such as PHP and ASP.NET use server side validation. On the other hand, the user input validation can also take place on the client side, and that would be called client side validation. I did want to mention too that whitelisting, whitelist validation is another approach you can take. So whitelist validation is the practice of only accepting input that is known to be good. It's on a whitelist. Yes, allow this specifically. This can involve validating compliance with 
expected type, length, size, uh, range, number, format, other standards, right? Before accepting an input for further processing. So for example, when you validate uh, that an input I value is a credit card number, right? This may involve validating that the input value contains only numbers, uh, is between 13 and 16 digits long, uh, and passes the business logic check of correctly passing uh, the LUN formula, L-U-H-N. That's, that's a formula for calculating the validity of a number based on the last check digit of the card. So when using whitelist validation, you should consider uh, the following points. Is the data type correct? If the data is a string, is it the correct length? Uh, if the data is numeric, is the expected numeric range uh, correct for this type of data? Uh, what about content? Does the data look like the expected type of data, right? So for example, uh, does it satisfy the expected properties of a zip code if it is supposed to be a zip code, right? That sort of thing. Very interesting. So, uh, okay. Cold fusion, right? So again, as with PHP example, security testers should be come familiar with the vulnerabilities associated with a web server using uh, cold fusion. And here's some script. This is out of the book. You can go there and reference that in further detail. Now, uh, VB script, right? Uh, uh, VB script is the, the next code snippet, right? Uh, is an example of custom validator, right? To validate a password is correctly formatted. So in this case, you might need to create uh, two user-defined functions, right? And um, and, and VB script can help uh, you do that, right? It's a scripting language developed by Microsoft, and it converts these static web pages into the dynamic web pages. It's powerful programming features that you would, uh, that a company may be interested in. And it's a starting point for investigating VB script vulnerabilities. That would be the point here. So VB script, this visual basic script, uh, developed by Microsoft. Again, it, it converts those static web pages into dynamic web pages. Um, uh, and so this is an example of it. Again, more in the book on that. Now, I will advise you um, that the Microsoft Security Bulletin search page is an excellent starting point for investigating VBScript vulnerabilities. And you can find that at uh, http colon slash slash technet.microsoft.com. Uh, let me see if I can add it to the slide as we speak. Let me go right here. <gasps> what happened to it? I'm using valuable time here. Ah. All right. Ha! I'm back and I made it work. So that website uh, is where you'd want to go. Those are Microsoft Security Bulletins, and it's a good link to save, play with for VB script vulnerabilities as a security tester. Uh, JavaScript is another popular scripting language for creating dynamic web pages, as I think we've mentioned. Um, the scripting language uh, can include functions and alerts, which is nice. It's widely used, very popular, uh, and a variety of vulnerabilities, of course, have been exploited in older web browsers. So as a security testers and even your administrators, you should inspect every computer for unpatched and outdated browser versions and keep up with the vulnerabilities. Um, and that is uh, really a key point for a lot of uh, script type uh, capabilities, but for JavaScript uh, too. Here is uh, an example of some of the script. I will say to you an additional source, let me just post it. There you go. An, a, an additional source uh, for implementing input validation in Java is the OWASP, OWASP, Enter, Enterprise Security API. ESAPI. You can find it at that link. It's a freely available reference for implementation of security related methods that can be used to build secure applications. Okay, we'll come back next with a little more in JavaScript.